Hello everyone, this is Mitch and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program capsule. So today I want to tackle aerodynamics and how it affects um, planes, space planes and rockets in the stock game. Now there are mods that make um, the physics of aerodynamics in the game more realistic, but I'm interested in the stock ones for this video. So first of all, aerodynamics. Uh, let's start with rockets because those are the ones who are the, well, quote unquote, least affected by aerodynamics, but they're still very much so affected by them. But you're not exactly as involved as when trying to build planes, for example. So I'm going to take a, an example from a very terrible rocket from an aerodynamics standpoint, and that's my Duna return vehicle. Why is it so bad? Well, first of all, you have a part that's larger than everything else along the stack. That creates a lot of drag. And drag essentially um, pushes, creates force, a retrograde force, uh, around the part that is creating drag. And any part that's exposed to the airflow, that's not part of a sleek stack like that that does this is pretty good this is a 2.5 meter stack and it's pretty good i mean there are all those little um what they're called um separatrons but this heat shield is horrible for drag not to mention the blunt end of the docking port all the shoots every little thing these tanks um those rcs thruster blocks Everything that's exposed to the airflow and that's not really aerodynamic is going to cause drag. Um, those nose cones might be causing drag. And all these nodes at the end, like if you can stick something at the bottom, like this, if you have those green nodes and you can stick something below them, the game treats them as open ends. Uh, in, in real life, what this does is when you have a blunt end like that at the back of a vehicle, it creates a vacuum which pulls on your vehicle when it's going at speed. And Kerbal Space Program treats it similarly. I mean, in this case, this is a rocket exhaust. It shouldn't be that big of an effect, but it still creates an effect. So normally, if you have a blunt end and it's not a rocket engine like that, you might want to put an inverted nose cone in there to reduce drag. For example, aerodynamics, I could put... It would be stupid because they're, you know thrusters but I could put inverted nose cones on all of those nodes and I would reduce drag. Now what does drag do however? Well first of all it makes you lose efficiency in terms of fuel. You're essentially fighting drag to get out of the atmosphere. Now it's not usually the most um, problematic force on your rocket in terms of efficiency. Um, gravitational drag is much worse. But, for a rocket, especially, uh, you cannot fight gravitational drag with lift. You're not trying to do that. You're trying to get up above the atmosphere and then horizontal to escape the gravitational drag. What the aerodynamic drag, what the airflow is going to do to your rocket, however, and this is why I turned on the center of mass overlay, is for a rocket like this, where you have a ton of drag very far up around the top of your rocket, very far away from your center of mass, what it's going to do is if you turn your rocket off your prograde, all those forces pulling retrograde are no longer in line with the center of mass. And what that means is that if there's something pulling on your rocket and it's not in line with the center of mass, it's going to create torque your rocket is going to twist. It's going to turn and it might tumble. In fact, if you've downloaded this rocket from my previous videos, from my Let's Play, and you've tried flying it up, it's not impossible to do. But it's a pain. It's kind of a pain because all that drag is going to make the rocket flip around if you're not careful. If you move too far away from prograde, it just spins out of control. And that's probably what happening, what, what's happening to uh, some of your rockets. If you're having problems with spinning, that could be it. Also, the opposite can be true. You can make a rocket overly stable. 
That's done by putting fins at the bottom. Yes, it will prevent your rocket from flipping around because you're essentially creating more drag behind the center of mass. And what's that What's that doing? It, well, it's pulling behind your center of mass. So it's actually centering your rocket on its prograde axis. It's essentially pushing against drag from the top of your rocket. So if you put fins, yes, you can somewhat counter drag coming from the top of this rocket. But if your rocket is already, you know, pretty well streamlined, pretty aerodynamic, and there isn't much drag at the top, and you put fins at the bottom, your rocket won't want to turn. You will be unable to do a gravity turn, and, well, you'll be going straight up, and you'll be fighting your own fins to try to steer it and get it into orbit. So there's that to keep in mind. And that's pretty much it for a rocket aerodynamics. So... Something much better would be something like the station. See, there is a huge fairing. And sure, it's creating a lot of drag, but it's a lot less than if I had all those exposed parts creating drag at the top of the rocket. Believe me, that would fly horribly without the nose cone. Probably much worse than the return vehicle. And look how far down the uh, center of mass is at launch. That, that, that would be a pain. But because there is a nose cone, because there is a fairing keeping everything inside of it out of the airflow, drag is much, much reduced. So this is actually pretty aerodynamic. So for rockets, that's pretty much it. If you can limit drag at the front and, well, you don't really need, you, you shouldn't need fins at the bottom then your rockets won't flip nearly as much. And that's pretty much it. Of course, they could be flipping because your center of thrust is not in line, or your center of mass is not perfectly in the center, or something like that. But, generally speaking, from an aerodynamics perspective, this is the way to keep them stable. Keep drag away from the front, and, well, try to keep them streamlined. Keep uh, Make your rockets look like actual rockets, like missiles or whatever and you'll be alright. Now for planes, however. We'll load up a little thing here. Now it's not a space plane, but it's a plane. And I'm gonna explain how it works, basically in terms of aerodynamics. So we have the center of mass, center of thrust, center of lift. Oops, sorry, that was a flip. That's the purple one is the center of thrust. And the uh, teal one, cyan, whatever, is center of lift. Anyways, so you'll notice that they're not perfectly in line. They're actually pointing down a little bit, and I'm going to explain why. But first of all, plane aerodynamics. Why do you put tail fins? Well, first of all, this one, which you might think, oh, it's to, in order to get yaw. Well, normally you don't really want to yaw with a plane. You do want control over that axis. But what you really don't want is the plane to be unstable. And that wing provides stability. So that's the main purpose of this one. And that's why I disabled pitch and roll and only put yaw on this. It's because unless I'm pushing yaw, I don't want the plane to yaw. Because yawing actually is unstable. Because you're deflecting the air in a way that's not perfectly in line with the center of mass. So not only does it turn the craft side to side, but it also causes roll inherently. There is no way you can yaw and not roll unless you have an equal force, an equal amount of deflection of the air on the other side of the center of mass. So yawing, eh, it's for stability, mostly. And fine control, but whatever. Uh, these ones... The tail fins are to help with pitch stability. So we have yaw stability and pitch stability. These are not for roll. You could use them for roll, but it's not the best use of them. This is for pitch. You want your pitch control to be as far away from your center of mass as possible. Because again, this is kind of like a lever. And the further away you are from the center point, from your fulcrum, from the center of mass basically, the more of an effect it has. 
And that's all you need those control surfaces for, for pitch. And for roll, well, you put them on the wings. You can actually put it in line with the center of mass. That would be ideal. And the further away they are, the better. Now, why did I not put those control surfaces further away? They would be more effective. But as you're going to see, this plane is actually fairly agile as it is. In fact, I had to tone down the other D. So the angle of deflection does not go as far. These things will not move as much because I lowered the settings. Uh, well, on all but pitch. And that's because I don't need to roll that fast. I need finer control. Now, I've also done something else, and that's why you're going to notice that these things are actually pointing kind of downwards. That's because of the wings. So, center of thrust, well, I suppose I can keep it shown. Anyways, so two things about um, this vehicle. First of all, the center of lift is somewhat far. It's not too bad. It's actually pretty good where it is, but it's a little bit far from the center of mass. But you do want it behind the center of mass as much as possible. Uh, because if it's in front, there is it's, it's just like the rockets, basically. If it's in front, that center of lift is going to pull up on your nose. And your nose, everything in front of your center of mass, is typically very low drag. Which means that this pulling force is going to be extremely strong and your plane will start doing flips. If you put it behind, well, we've got this stabilizing fins. And we've got, you know, like even part of the wings and control surfaces are all behind uh, the center of mass. And that's fighting um, the torque that the lift could apply. It could apply. So instead, since we're not, we're fighting the torque, we're still getting lift. So we're actually fighting the gravitational pull and using wings like just, you know, regular planes do to fight gravity and not to cause spin. Ideally, you would have maybe the um, uh, center of lift be in the middle of the center of mass, but that could be problematic as well because center of mass might change. And here we're going to see, like, look, it's moving very subtly, but that's a very small plane as well. Because we are burning fuel, well, we are removing fuel forcefully in this case, but there's a good chance that your center of mass will move as your vehicle burns fuel. And you don't want that center of mass to go behind the center of lift, because as I said, your plane is going to start doing flips. It's going to be very unstable. Now, since the center of lift is kind of far from the center of mass, I've actually built what it's called what is called incidence into the wings. So if we look at the rotate tool, we're going to see that the wings are slightly rotated backwards. That means that the plane will tend to want to lift. It will like to fly up and not like to fly down, actually. And this is something really good, especially for space planes or um, things that have a hard time steering, well, pitching. If you want them to go up, build incidence in the wings. You don't want to go too far because then you're going to actually cause drag and reduce lift and slow down your plane. But just this little bit, it's perfect to fight the uh, center of lift that's kind of behind uh, the center of mass. And I've also inclined uh, this part of the wing. It could be more inclined, but there's really no point. I mean, it's a small craft. It's very nimble. It's agile. It flies, this actually flies pretty well. Um, but I built a little bit of an incline on these wings upwards, and that's called a dihedral setup. Basically what this does, although at this amount, it does not do a whole lot, but if you build your wings that way, if you incline them towards, I don't know how to say this, but towards the inside, I suppose, um, what this does is that if your plane rolls, for example, if the plane rolled to the left, this bit that is inclined will gain lift because it's going to be better angled with the horizon. 
it's going to gain lift and this bit is going to lose lift because it's going to be at a worse angle to gain lift. So it's actually going to want to roll the plane back to a level state. If you do the opposite, which is called an anedral design, so if we go like that, it's actually going to want to flip over. Because if you turn this side like this, if you roll right, this wing will now gain lift. And because it gains lift, and because it's to the left of the center of mass, it's going to want to make it roll further to the right until it's actually flipped. So that's the thing. So let's just test this plane for a minute and see how it flies. Oh, and one more thing before we fly the plane, um, the gears. I'm going to notice that the gears are very close to the center of mass. I wouldn't necessarily advise putting them that close, but you don't want your rear landing gears to be too far from the center of mass because your plane rotates around the center of mass to pitch. And so for liftoff, if your landing gears are too far back, or if your plane is very long, you're going to smash the end into the ground, or you're simply going to be pushing against the ground to lift off, and it's not going to work out very well for you. So you want your landing gear to be, of course, the rear landing gears need to be behind the center of mass, but not too far. And you don't want the uh, end of the plane to be too far back either from the landing gears. And the same kind of applies for the front landing gear. I mean, it could be much further up in front. It would be more stable, but this is actually stable. And you want the rear landing gears to be slightly above the front one, because again, this is going to make your plane um, pitch up ever so slightly right from the runway, which is going to help it take off. So let's see how this thing flies. And finally, we're going to tackle space planes, although I'm not a space plane god by any mean. There are much better people at building space planes. I still know the theory, so I'm going to try and explain it to you a bit. I'm going to turn on SAS, no real reason for it. I mean... And find controls. And I'm simply going to pull back gently and boom, lift off. And see, it wants to lift off. It's picking up vertical speed, and I'm not doing anything, I'm not touching anything. And slightly going up on its own. But I can control it just fine, I can make it do a loop. Up we go, up we go. Now I might have been a, bit, a little low to make a loop, but we'll see if we can recover. Yes, and here we are level again. And so if we check, the plane actually flies pretty level, but the prograde marker is going to keep going up slightly. That's because of the wing incidence, which also affects the, um, the engines. The engines are slightly, slightly upwards. But it's still pretty manageable. And we can roll just fine. And, as I said, if I yaw, it's going to roll. Yes, it will yaw, but it's also going to roll. And that's because I don't have a control surface that's mirrored underneath the rear end of the plane. And we can go back for a landing. Turn around. And that's a very basic, uh, very basic plane. It works. It's not going to do much for you, however. Uh, you might be able to uh, do contracts for it. I mean, this is just standard structural fuselage. You could replace it with a uh, cabin or whatever and, you know, bring tourists or fly over specific coordinates, that type of contract. And it would work fine. And we're actually going to need to throttle almost all the way down because this thing has a lot of thrust compared to its weight. So it goes pretty fast. We're going to flare up actually before the landing because this thing just has too much speed. So what's the big difference with space planes? Well, you actually want less lift for a space plane and more thrust in general. 
and you want to make sure that you minimize drag as much as possible because the idea with a space plane is not so much to use the wings to fight gravity as it is to use the air to provide the oxidizer for your engines. So more wings actually creates more drag which limits your top speed which limits your ability to actually get into space. And we're actually gonna overshoot the landing uh, the runway. But that's fine because the ground is actually more level at this uh, rank of uh, runway. And boop, and we only have to break. Oh, and cut the engines, that might help. Ooh, are we gonna run in the ground? Hopefully not. I'm still gonna revert, I mean, nothing's lost, but uh, we're not gonna regain full value since we're not on the runway, and I don't care, this is just a tutorial. So there we go, safe landing, very simple plane, flies really well. So what about a space plane? So that's it, like the big difference with a space plane is that you want speed, and wings actually create drag. They, they create lift, but they also create drag, so you don't want to go overboard with wings, and you really want to limit drag. It's one of the biggest things um, for a space plane. Limit drag at all costs. Remember what I said about those open nodes? Like, you don't want the tail of your plane, your space plane, to look like that. That's terrible. You don't want to have uh, sections like the heat shield I shown you. Uh, that's much bigger than the previous part of the stack. You want to make sure you're using adapters. Um, try to put everything in a cargo bay. Of course, I don't have one for this size of... Uh, well, no, actually, there are no cargo bays for that size of a vehicle, but we have service bays. So, for instance, I could... Wait, that's the big one. You could put a service bay in there and put all your science experiments, batteries, whatever you want to bring along inside that service bay, just so it's not exposed to the airflow. Because again, that's going to create more drag. If you keep it in a service bay that with the doors shut, then you're limiting drag, which is really good. And that's it, really. You don't want to be too aggressive uh, lifting off because ultimately achieving orbit is a matter of, of horizontal speed, not vertical one. Of course, you want to leave the atmosphere, but your real goal is to achieve a horizontal speed that's as high as possible whilst using the oxygen around you in the atmosphere uh, to get into space without lugging around the oxidizer. And that's the real purpose of space planes. Of course, they also retain control when you return um, from space, which is, good, which is great. You have control surfaces, so you can land them where you want, ideally. There are multiple advantages to space planes, but they're also much more complicated to balance because it's a trick it's a tricky balance to get the right amount of oxidizer for a closed cycle engine to push you out of the atmosphere into space but you still need to retain uh, sufficient thrust to weight ratio and that type of stuff to actually reach a good speed before trying to go into space so it's a really complicated balance and act but that's basically how aerodynamics work in Kerbal Space Program. So if that helped you, if you've enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.